Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is close to all who call him. The, the Lord, Lord is close to, to all who call him. him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name for ever and ever. The Lord is great and highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The Lord is close to all, to all who call, call him. him. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The, the Lord, Lord is close to, to all who call him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him and who call on him in truth. The, the Lord, Lord is close to, to all, all who call, call him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, 
that we may listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for one denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because nobody has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled to the householders, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The almost final words of today's gospel were, I am generous. This is the landowner justifying himself to the people who are grumbling when their sense of justice is offended. I think that should be our starting point whenever we think about God. Jesus is telling us something about God that upsets our own human sense of right and wrong. But God doesn't need to apologize for us for being generous. If we didn't get it in the beginning with the prophet Isaiah, then we should learn the lesson now. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are high above the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Everything we can possibly know about God comes from our human experience. For example, we know more or less what humans mean by love and goodness. But if we say that God is love or God is good or just, we always have to keep a mental reservation. God's love is like human love or goodness, but it is also different. Theologians say that we talk about God using the language of analogy. We can only know and imagine God through our own human experience. However, we have to bear in mind that our experiences are not perfect or complete, and only God has the fullness of love, the fullness of generosity. Only God sees the complete picture, understands the whole of human society and psychology. Jesus' parable today emphasizes that lesson for us. 
we are presented with a very human, very familiar situation. Some people work through the heat of the day. Others are unemployed or only partially employed, trying to fit into an economy that doesn't meet their needs. They aren't better or worse people. Opportunity has nothing to do with people's character or their virtue. Some people are born with multiple advantages. Others lack education or skills or startup finance, or they may be excluded on the basis of their gender or age or race. In many sectors, so much is being mechanized that machines are putting people out of jobs. As a long-term teacher, I'm afraid that artificial intelligence, AI, will put me out of a job, will make me redundant. We live in a society which is very uneven. In fact, South Africa has one of the highest inequality rates in the world. And that unevenness means that so many people simply don't have access to what they need for survival. Jesus might have this in mind, or his Jewish background might have arranged that people receive an equal day's wage. And that was a living wage, which could feed a family for a day, not a token for having sweated it out at the workplace for a full day. Catholic social teaching reminds us again and again that the economy is meant to serve the people and not people to serve the economy. Human beings are the given, the first reality. They are the ones towards whom our economies should be geared and not the other way around. In 2015, Pope Francis wrote in Laudato Si, the alliance between the economy and technology ends up with sidelining anything that's unrelated to its immediate interests. It's not fair when huge portions of God's people are excluded and marginalized because they don't fit the prevailing economic model. The ideal of growth must be seen for the false God that it is. It presumes that there are unlimited resources and that the earth can continue to be stripped and extracted. It's time for us to start thinking of halting growth or even degrowth, or finding goodness in contracting economies, which serve the greatest portion of people, and not just those who, who are already wealthy. Certainly, to avoid the devastating effects of global climate change, we have to drastically reduce our use of fossil fuels. If we care about the children, and the generations who are going to follow us, we need to transition to renewable sources of energy to replace fossil fuels. So, returning to the gospel parable, Jesus, if he were here in South Africa in the 2020s, he'd be, he would be telling us about coal or oil workers in a contracting industry and who will need to learn new skills for a cleaner, greener, healthier economy for future generations. This may sound brutal and difficult and even unjust. So like Jesus, we should really be sympathetic to the plight of the workers and supportive of their needs. We don't want them to make the kind of sacrifices that Paul was talking about in the second reading when he had to give up so much of his own dreams to support the Christians of Philippi. We don't expect that of workers in our countries. Remember that God's ways are higher than our ways, and God's thoughts are so much above our thoughts. Are we prepared to adopt God's ways to put justice towards the workers first?
Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, power, and the glory are yours, now now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, You are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. May Almighty God Bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.